It's my understanding that you purposely did not want to try them before this. <laughs> I'm afraid. <laughs> It's okay. It's gonna be fun. That I'm afraid is gonna go into the it's gonna go into the little <laughs> intro opening thing, just so you know. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Spill the Beans, the show where you never know what you'll get. My name is Dominic Gomez and I am your host. Today's guest features none other than the one and only Alex Bell. Alex, how are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing okay. How are you, Dominic? I'm doing great. Are you excited to to taste these beans for the very first time? Kind of. <laughs> Let me explain how this show works. So I will ask you five different questions. Uh, after each question, before you answer, we will both eat a random bean from our bean boozled box. Just so you know, there's no requirement to swallow um, or finish your bean because I promise you, you might not like what you get. Sound good? Yes. All right, perfect. That being said, let's get started. So you, Alex Bell, um, are currently the president of CDSJ, Katie Kai, and you've been heavily involved in a number of other organizations and offices, including Student Activities, Ebony, Food Justice Association, Office of Diversity Education, Project for Emerging Dialogue, Spring Breakaway, and much, much more. In your time working with these groups, you've helped to put on a lot of events. Which of the events over the past four years have been your favorite and which have been most fulfilling? And before you answer, it is bean time. It's this little guy. Do we go uh, time? What does it look like? Take a look at your box. It's a yellow one with some little white spots. So I'm either getting buttered popcorn or a rotten egg. <laughs> Those are kind of a lose-lose. I have <laughs> dead fish or strawberry banana smoothie. So um, it's your time to answer the question in three, two, one, speed time. It's buttered popcorn. It's buttered popcorn. <laughs> strawberry banana smoothie. Wow, we both got kind of lucky. Um, Starting off strong. We'll start with kind of like favorite, just for funsies, has really been like the intersectionality events that we would put on with Ebony that was specifically for people of color who also identify as queer. Um, where just some beautiful moments were made um, that were expected but also unexpected. I would say also um, in terms of just fun. Um, there, Seek puts on like a community event where all the orgs bring like food from different countries. And so that was just really fun to like see what everybody brought to the table. And literally like the best thing about community organizing is when you all come together to eat food. So stuff like just potluck, stuff like that. Those are always going to be my favorite. But when it comes to most fulfilling, I think first I want to talk about Spring Breakaway just because that's what I did my first two years. That was like the big thing. And both trips are really impactful for different reasons. I think the first one really just because um, I didn't understand the extent of food insecurity in the United States before I went to California and literally like learned about all this stuff specifically about the area, but then in regards to the rest of the United States as well, just how um, bad things are really. And then the second year meeting somebody who was formerly incarcerated from Laos and kind of understanding the impact of mass incarceration specifically on the Asian American community, which like obviously as a black person, I had thought about affecting my community, but considering and affecting other marginalized groups and like making those bridges of solidarity was really, really impactful. Um, so those two things. And then separate from that, I would really say the panels just because when I thought of this question, I thought of a specific moment that happened <laughs> where I was like, so just, I, I didn't know what to do with myself. Kelly Henderson, love her, came up to me. It was right before the first panel was about to start in 2020. And she was just like, there's a lot of people outside waiting. Should I let them in? <laughs> and I was like, there's a lot of people outside right now to come to this? And Always I a good sign. just did it myself. So I was like, yeah, let the people in, I guess. And the way that ballroom just filled up, I was not expecting it. I was not expecting it at all, but it was so cool. Um, so yeah, that's some magical moments. Absolutely, that's awesome. And you know, those and events are like, definitely- ODE, ODE, sorry, just like plug my peoples. But yeah, that's that's what we do. No, of course, of course. You're totally allowed to plug your people during this. This is, this is your space. Um, yeah, no, those events have definitely made a huge impact on campus. And that kind of brings us into our next question. Um, so you yourself have been directly involved with bringing some pretty esteemed poets to campus over the past couple of years. Um, Portia Laiwola, and most recently, Sonia Sanchez, who I know you're especially excited about. 
As a poet yourself, how does it feel to be able to interact with such renowned writers? And what do you hope to accomplish in your own work? And of course, before we start, it is once again, bean time. This is bark or peach? I think this is coconut or spoiled milk. I don't know though. Well, for your sake, I really hope it's coconut. Alex, in three, two, one, it's bean time. Mm-mm. That is bar. That's boiled milk. So mm. poetry. Poetry. Well, first of all, I like to put on events that I think black people will come to. <laughs> so that's why I like to bring black poets. Um, but also, yeah, I, I mean, I'm a black feminist poet, so I like to bring black feminist poets. But I think what was so special sort of special about doing the Porsche Ola Iwola event. To see, first of all, the workshop. If you were able to attend the workshop, it was really cool and she made you think in a different way using this really simple metaphor. And I love that sort of work um, that like you start with something seemingly really simple and then you make it this really deep complex thing. And so doing that workshop was really cool. And then the performance later was really cool. And just to see the impact that that had specifically on a lot of the black women that showed up of just being like, wow, like we want more, this is amazing. like. That sort of stuff, you can't, <laughs> you can't create it like from nothing but like wholesomeness. And I think interacting with her, like I got to hug her. I thought I was gonna cry. Like it was just such a beautiful moment for everybody involved because we really just, I don't know, we don't, we don't get to see ourselves that often on campus. And so like making those spaces and even making them virtually with Sonia Sanchez. And I will say, I didn't really know who Sonia Sanchez was before Terry Johnson told me that she we were gonna bring her. And so I feel like that's important because we don't always necessarily make those intergenerational connections ourselves, I don't think. And so like, for me, like Portia was somebody I knew who I felt like is relevant in my sort of like age range and everything. And with Sonia was like, dang, there's so much knowledge here though, like generations and generations of knowledge here. And that in and of itself was like so much more valuable but in a completely different way. Um, and I think more and more like as I write my own poetry, as I think about poetry in general, um, how much like the ancestors are, have to be a priority, so. And even though Sonia is not an ancestor, I feel like she is in a sense like a living ancestor with us because she's known all of those people. She's been through all of that. So Yeah, absolutely. And and I like that you mentioned Terry Johnson there because it kind of brings us into our next question. Shout out Terry first. But it brings us into our next question about role models. And you know, at the beginning of this episode, we went on and on and on about all the things you're involved in in campus through activism, your own work, your own scholarship and leadership. So I think at this point, now that you're a senior, it's pretty safe to say that you're a role model for a lot of students on campus. Going off of that, who would you say that your role models have been over the past four years and who's inspired you to be the leader that you are today? And once again, before we start, it is bean time. How'd you enjoy that spoiled milk? It wasn't that horrible, but it's because I swallowed it quickly. Well, looky here, I now it is my turn to have spoiled milk or coconut. Birthday cake or dirty dishwasher? Mm. Oh boy, all right, in three, two, one, let's talk some role models. So I have to talk about my granny because, oh God, no, oh no. Mm -mm. Granny's everything, sorry. Woo! <sighs> granny is everything, black feminist elders are everything, even if they don't call themselves feminists. And I think I'm kind of like sort of getting my granny to come into that consciousness to some extent. But I think like she has helped me really like come to understand who I am. And I think that way I can kind of help other people understand who they are. And I think that that is like one of the most important things in life is like know to know who you are and where you come from. And I think that's also, I have to mention my dad, um, He's really important to me and we have a complicated relationship, but I would not have survived all four years of college without being able to call him whenever I was just really like in pieces. And he always helps me kind of like put myself back together again. And I, I appreciate that about him a lot. And so I, and I hope to do that kind of similar thing for other people um, and be that. And that's why I'm like, my friends um, are role models for me. I really try to like mold myself in the ways that I admire about about other people in general. Um, so that's why I like to surround myself with people. I really, really appreciate their qualities and their traits. 
Terry Johnson um, is a huge role model for me. Again, like don't think I would have made it through these past four years without her in my life. Um, she's just such a big thing on campus that you like don't even understand like the breadth and the magnitude and everything of what she does and who she is to four people. Um, and then in in poetry and life as a black feminist, definitely right now is Adrienne Marie Brown and Alexis Pauline Gums. I feel like they're doing some work that is like so cool with like nature and revolution and I just can't get enough. How is a uh, how is dirty dishwater? Again, it's not the worst. If you just swallow it quickly, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm I'm feeling like I was harder than I actually am, like thought I was before going into this. So you're doing great so far. <laughs> um, so we've talked a lot about uh, your leadership and activism on campus, but something you're also known for is some of your delicious vegan recipes and your cooking. From selling out a vegan barbecue uh, at Music on the Mall a couple years ago to <laughs> serving up homemade chili in Bishop's Lounge. All Alex Bell recipes are known to be a hit, and that's just a fact. What are some of your favorite recipes to cook, and how does it feel knowing your peers can't get enough of your cooking? And before we talk about your own tasty dishes, it's time to eat something that's potentially not going to be very tasty. And once again, it is bean time. I'm, I'm following in your steps now. So I, you got coconut and spoiled milk, and then I got spoiled milk, and you got dirty dishwater and birthday cake, and now I have dirty dishwater and birthday cake. See, and now I have, I think, dead fish or strawberry banana smoothie, I think. Oh boy. Well, in three, two, one, let's talk about some recipes. Mm. That is, that's the dish one. That's oh, strawberry banana. I'm doing okay. I don't really like bananas though. So, <laughs> I'm just picky. <laughs> um. Okay, recipes, my favorite recipes to cook. I feel like I've been making this like I tall curry a lot, like over the past several months, it's really, really good. It's like a Caribbean recipe um, that I found on YouTube from this vegan lady. Um, but I don't know, my own vegan recipes are really just like my take on what I grew up eating. Like, I, <laughs> so that's why, I don't know, I'm thinking about the whole event with Add Music on the Mall and like giving people my like vegan barbecue again, it was very much like, are yeah i'm gonna make all this food but like are people gonna like pay me for it and the fact that that happened was really like oh okay i guess it's pretty good but i'm thinking like you know just like classic like home like southern like food that just feels good on your like spirit and like i make some really good sweet potatoes i make some i started making um i don't know cinnamon rolls recently just like stuff that makes your your heart happy. Those are my favorite recipes. So I don't oh, know if I have specifics. I make a lot of like spaghetti pastas, like super creamy or tomatoey, depending on the day. Like those are yeah, comfort food. Well, hopefully you'll have some more opportunities to to serve some dishes before we graduate. Um, Maybe if we can all get vaccinated. Woo. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, Alex, that brings us to the end of our interview, which means it is ultimate bean time. Now, I know you asked before we started recording that we'd check in uh, at the end before we took three beans. How are you feeling about that now? I think I can do it. All right. Love the love the can-do attitude. All right. So it's ultimate bean time, three random beans. Yeah, Zach is in the back cheering you on. Woo! My biggest fan. Oh, boy. All right. So here I have, no. once again, um, bark or peach, dog food or chocolate pudding, and... Um, I think this is Tutti Fruity or Stinky Socks. He's gonna do it with me, is that okay? <laughs> oh, absolutely, yeah, two for one, let's go. So another coconut and spoiled milk, and I think this one is either also peach or barf. All right, well, it is ultimate bean time. Let's go in three, two, one. Wow. Mm -mm. Okay, well, we're wrapping things up here, Alex. Like we've said, you over the past four years have promoted and created spaces for a lot of change on campus. What would you say to students starting at Southwestern who are coming in wanting to encourage change, wanting to look for places to find activism, but don't know where to start? How would you encourage them and what advice would you give? I keep hearing that people don't always know what the CDSJ stands for, so I'm going to say it right now real slow. Join the Coalition for Diversity and Social Justice. 
we are here for all of the things really, mostly for people of color looking for their people, but we're also here for the allies. I feel like people sometimes get it twisted that we're only a people of color oriented orient organization. And it's like, you can center people of color and specifically like black people and Latinx people at Southwestern, it seems like are because we're kind of the largest like people of color populations, but really all the people of color in your work, if you try to, even if there are like allies around. So that are not people of color. So I don't know, that's my like first thing, but also everyone needs to know that they have a role in the revolution. If you believe that like we're not free, then how are you freeing yourself and your organization and making sure everybody in your organization or your classes or your whatever like spaces you're in, like, does everybody feel free here to like be themselves like fully? And I think once we kind of start asking ourselves those questions is when we start to change our worlds. And I don't know, that's all I, I feel like that's the best advice I can offer is just like change your world for the better. Make sure that everybody in your spaces feels safe and feels comfortable all the time. And like literally like in your house even, like I think a big thing that people get it twisted is like they get into social justice or like learn about, you know, inequality and are like, oh my God, I have to like go into the world and like do something. And it's like, well, start with your life. Like start with your immediate, who are your people? Are they like, you know, do they believe that everybody should be free? Like, where are we in the like mental emotional spiritual side of revolution before we even start to try and get to the community work because you have to have that basis in the community work in yourself um and really truly like know what you believe and why you believe in it and then you can start making those changes in your communities and then you know it's all of this like sort of like web and you have to know that there's like people doing the work everywhere and we all have to be doing it in the places that we are so that it gets done literally everywhere like that's so. Absolutely. Well said. Alex Bell, everybody, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Dominic Gomez. This has been Spill the Beans. We'll, sh we'll catch up. I'm sorry. I have so many bad beans days in my mouth. We'll catch up with you next time with more awful beans and awful questions. Cool. We're done. Just like that. <laughs> cool. Thanks.